Hi, I'm Kai Kennedy, Tube Amp Guru, and today we're going to talk about safety and staying alive when you're dealing with tube amplifiers. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. Some of it's accurate, some of it not so accurate. So today I'm going to give you the benefit of my experience of over 25 years of working on vacuum tube amplifiers and staying alive. Okay, the first thing to talk about in tube amp safety is the fuse. The fuse is your friend. It should never be increased in value. It should always be exactly what it says on the amp right here. If you make it bigger, you run into danger, severe danger. You can, you can actually burn your house down. Because if this isn't protecting you, there's nothing else to protect you except the breaker in your house, in your electrical box. So it's really important that we check the fuse. But the first thing you do before you check the fuse on any device is you unplug it from the wall. Remove the plug from the wall. Now it's safe to test the fuse. We pull the fuse out, we look at it. It looks okay, but I need to look at the really fine print on here. It might take a magnifying glass to see what value this fuse is and ensure that it's the value that is written here on the amplifier. It's very common with an old amp when you buy it that it's all original, that someone will put a fuse in it that's way too big for the amplifier just to sell it, just so it'll work when they test it out. And the danger is, is that you buy an old amp and you plug it in and it, it blows up, it catches fire because the fuse didn't protect you. So remember, the fuse is your friend. So if it's not obviously blown, the only way to know for sure if it's good or bad is to do a go, no go test. And we're going to use a continuity tester to do that with. Most digital voltmeters have a setting on them that's a beep continuity checker. And what it does is it'll beep, and that means you're getting a connection. Or it doesn't beep because there's no connection. So what we do is we hold the fuse in our hand and we touch one of the probes to one side, take the other probe, and we touch the other side of the fuse. We hear the beep. We know that the circuit is complete and that the fuse is fine. And now we can put it back in the amplifier and eliminate the fuse as a problem. Many of you have been warned of the dangers of a vacuum tube amplifier. There are always disclaimers when you, you're going to do a mod to your amp or do anything inside a tube amplifier. Warning, warning, danger, you can die. There are lethal voltages within. And this is true. Uh, it's not common for someone to die, but it is possible. Therefore, we need to take all the precautions we can. The lethal voltages that are stored in the amplifier, even when it's off, and it's been off for a long time, are stored in the filter capacitors. You've probably heard about those quite a bit. Filter capacitors need to be changed at least every 10 years. Uh, they dry out and they will actually increase the noise level and, the, and decrease the stability of the amplifier. So now I'm going to show you where the filter capacitors are. All right, the amplifier we have here today is a 1966 Blackface Fender Showman amplifier. It's essentially the same power as a twin reverb, but it's the head version of the amplifier. We're going to talk about the filter caps. They're put in a hard to get to place on purpose. <laughs> They're deliberately put in a metal case to protect you from the lethal voltages that are stored within those capacitors. Also, under certain circumstances, these can explode. And so having them inside a metal case can contain the explosion. I'm going to remove the cover now and show you the filter capacitors in this 66 Showman amplifier. These are the capacitors that are known as filter capacitors. And they're called filter capacitors because they filter noise out of the sound. They filter hum and they also stabilize the amplifier. This is a chopstick available at many fine Japanese restaurants and is made of wood. And we're going to use it today to poke and prod inside an amplifier because it does not conduct electricity. You would never use a screwdriver or anything metal 
to poke or prod inside a tube amplifier. This is a great tool to use. Sometimes, if there's just a broken wire, you can find it by poking around with a non-conductive chopstick. There's a circuit inside the filter capacitor can that's called a bleeder circuit. And it's called a bleeder circuit because what it does is bleed the lethal voltages out of these caps over time after you turn the amplifier off. It's a safety feature. When the amp is operating, it does not even see the bleeder circuit, but when you turn it off, all this lethal voltage says, oh boy, I have a way to discharge to ground. So it goes through the bleed circuit and is bled off. But you can never, ever assume that an amp has a bleeder circuit or that the bleeder circuit is working properly. You must always assume that there are lethal voltages stored in these capacitors and never use a metal tool to touch them. Now I'm going to discharge these filter capacitors and make this amp safe to work on. Speaking of safety, the proper way to approach this is to always have one hand in your pocket and probe with the other hand. This is so that you do not complete a circuit through your body or through your heart, which could be fatal. As the heart valve operates in an opposing fashion, if you receive an electrical shock in that split second that both valves are closed, they will stay closed forever and you die. And that's what we want to avoid. So I'm going to discharge these filter capacitors by using a test lead, which is a wire with alligator clips on either end. They're very common and easy to find. I'm going to clip one end to the chassis, which is ground, and will discharge the voltages to ground. Ground meaning the biggest resistor on the planet, the planet itself. Now, with one hand in my pocket, I probe with the other end of the test lead, and I'm using a resistor on the end to avoid a spark. A 100 ohm resistor is just fine. Now, I reach over and I touch the positive of each filter capacitor for a few seconds in order to bleed off the lethal voltage. Now, you can tell the positive of the filter capacitor because it has a little dimple on it, and there's not a dimple on the other end. The other indicator is most filter capacitors have arrows on them pointing to the negative with the minus symbol inside the arrow, like this is negative, dummy, right here. This is negative. So you know that the opposite of negative is positive. So we want to discharge the positive of each one of the filter capacitors. So I'm going to discharge these filter capacitors by using a test lead. I'm going to clip one end to the chassis, which is ground. Now, with one hand in my pocket, I reach over and I touch the positive of each filter capacitor for a few seconds in order to bleed off the lethal voltage. And I'm using a resistor on the end to avoid a spark. Now, some of you may ask, how do we know for sure that this amp is safe to work on? I mean, you've been doing this all these years. This is our first time. Well, if you want to be absolutely sure, you can measure the voltage in the capacitors with a digital voltmeter set on DC. Because it's always better to see a voltage on a little screen than it is to feel it through your body. We do that by taking the black or negative lead of the test voltmeter and hook it to the chassis the same way we did to discharge the capacitors. We take the positive lead, again putting the other hand in the pocket, with the meter set on DC volts, we are going to measure the positive end of each of these capacitors and verify that there is no voltage left in these capacitors. All right, and now that we've unplugged the amp, checked the fuse, and discharged the filter capacitors, this showman is now safe to work on. For Premier Guitar, I'm Kai Kennedy. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.